The Song of Roland For seven years together the Emperor Charlemagne, our Lord and King, had sojourned within the land of Spain. From the upland to the seacoast he had conquered all the land, nor was any castle before him left to stand. There was not a town nor bulwark unbroken by his might, save only Saragossa that standeth on the height. King Marsile held that city, in whom no grace was found to love his god. He worshipped Apollo and Mahond, nor could shun the evil fortune that beleaguered him around. King Marcel of Saragossa to the orchard got him gone. He laid him down in the shadow on a white marble stone. About the kings were gathered more than twenty thousand men. His counts and dukes unto him King Marcel summoned then. Hearken, my lords, how sorely are we girt with sin and woe. Here now is come King Charlemagne our land to overthrow. I have no host of battle to meet him in his might, nor store enough of henchmen to beat him in the fight. As wise men give me counsel, save me from this death and shame. None spake, save Blanchandoline, alone from Valfond, keep the cane. Among the wisest heathen, Blanchandoline was known to be, and a good vassal moreover, and a man of chivalry. Cunning he was, and skillful, his overlord to aid, and he spoke unto King Marsil. Do thou not be dismayed, but send unto King Charlemagne the arrogant and strong, promise of faithful service and friendship, leal and long. Gifts shalt thou send unto him, both dogs and lions good, and seven hundred camels and a thousand hawks well mewed. With the gold and with the silver, mules four hundred shalt thou load, and fifty wains moreover to travel on the road, wherewith to pay his soldiers he hath ward here long enow. And unto Ike, it behooves him in the land of France to go, and Michaelmas shalt thou turn thee to Christ and his belief to hold in truth and honor of the emperor thy fief. If for th hostages he asks, thou shalt for him procure, of our children ten or twenty to make thy faith more sure. And thou thereby he perish, I will send mine own dear son. Rather let them die straight away than that we should be undone in honor and dignity and go like beggars in this land. Said Blanchandre, moreover, now by this good right hand and by the beard that on my breast is beaten by the breeze, soon shall ye see the French depart out of our provinces. They will go back to the land of France and to the country that is theirs. And when each man among them to his own house repairs, in Ac and in his own chapel, he will seek King Charlemagne. To St. Michael will he proffer high festival again. And the day will come, the term will pass, no tidings will there be. And the king's wrath is terrible, and a proud man is he. And forthwith from our hostages the heads he will let smite. Let them die, so Spain we lose not the beautiful and bright, or ever bid or evil be forced to undergo. Said the heathen, indeed the matter, it well might happen so. Marcel the king had finished his counsel for the day, and he summoned Clary de Balero and the men of his astray. Estramaris and Eudropis, his father there appeared, and Priamos, moreover, the garlon of the beard. And Machiner and Mahu, Machiner's aim was he, and Joamir and Malvian, the man from oversea. And Blanchandorin, moreover, that counsel they might take, ten men of the most villainous he summoned, and he spake. Lord barons unto Charlemagne the king, ye shall go down. He lieth in the leaguer of Cordova, the town. The branches of the olive in the hand ye all shall bear, that your good will and submission to the emperor shall declare. And if through your good counsel he may achieve a peace, I will give you fiefs and ample lands, as much as ye shall please, and enough of gold and silver. Then said the heathen men, Enough we have already. He closed the council then. But he said unto his henchmen, My barons ye must fare, and in your hands the branches of the olive ye must bear. Ye shall conjure the emperor when ye shall speak for me, that on me ye shall have mercy for his God's clemency. The month shall not pass over, ere unto him again I shall follow my ambassadors with a thousand faithful men, and be baptized his men to be in friendship and in truth. And if he will have hostages, he shall have them in all sooth. Said Blanchandrine, Fair fall thee, for the tidings we shall bring. Ten white mules were led out by them by Marcel, the king, the gifts of the king of Seville, their bits were all of gold, the saddles set upon them were silver to behold. They got them straight on horseback at Marcel his command, the branches of the olive they carried in hand, and they came to Charles, who governed the land of France the fair, who could not keep wholly keep himself from falling in the snare. The emperor was merry, his heart was glad withal. The town of Cordova was ta'en and overthrown the wall. With his catapults, the towers he had strongly beaten down, 
His chevaliers much treasure had taken in the town, much gold and silver trappings exceeding rich and fair, and longer in the city no men at all were there. There were not slain or Christian in an orchard Charlemagne, lay with Oliveira and Roland and the nobles of the train. Samson the duke and Ansees the fiery-hearted one, and Geoffrey of Anjou, bearer of the king's Gonfalon, and Guerrer and Guerin, and many a knight were good. Full fifteen thousand Frenchmen were gathered in the wood. The cavaliers were seated upon the cushions white. They were playing at the tables for pastime and delight. The wiser and the elder and the game of draughts they played, but the light lads of the army great sport with fence they made. Under a pine beside a briar was lightly to behold a high seat nobly fashioned out of purest gold. There sat the king who governed all the sweet realm of France, white-bearded with his flowery hair, and proud was his countenance, and fair likewise, and his body was stout and big of bone. To who would look upon him the king was lightly known. And forthwith the ambassadors descended from the steed and saluted him in friendship and bade him well to speed. Blanchandrine spoke first to the king, and he said, God, now God save thee. The glorious whom we must adore, King Marcel the Brave, put it this matter to thee. He hath questioned long and well concerning the religion that thou shalt save him out of hell. He would give thee bears and lions and leash the greyhounds good and seven hundred camels and a thousand hawks well mewed. And with the gold and silver mules, four hundred will he load, and fifty wains moreover to travel on the road. There will be Byzantza plenty on the fair golden fine, wherewith thou mayest pay lightly the soldiers of thy line. Here hast thou tarried over long, and behooves thee to repair to France, and Marceau's pledges shall soon pursue thee there. Thy faith will he take on him, and with hands folded amain. Become thy man, and hold of thee, in fief, and all the realm of Spain. Unto his god the emperor lifted both hands of grace, forthwith he lowered his proud head, and the thoughts came apace. The emperor bent down his brows, no hasty word he spake. In speech it was his custom, his leisure I to take. But lordly was his visage, when he lifted up the head and he spake to the ambassadors, Now much good ye have said. But King Marceau, for the chiefness of my foemen, is renowned upon his words that ye have given, what credit may I find? said the Saracen. Our hostesses shall make thy trust the more. Thou shalt have ten or fifteen men, or in thou wilt a score. And at the hazard of his life I will send my own dear son, the children of our bravest, to thee shall be sent on. And in thy lordly place, what time that thou shalt be on the great feast of St. Michael of the Peril of the Sea, it will be my pledges follow. This is the word of the king. At the baths that God wrought for thee will he have his christening, then answered Charles the Emperor, Yet hope abideth here. O oh, lovely was the vesper tide, and the sun sank fair and clear. The ten white mules to the stables by Charlemagne were sent. Within the noble orchard the king let pitch a tent, and host to the ambassadors was Charlemagne that day. Twelve sergeants of the army, their servitors were they. They bided all the evening till their fair day was born. The emperor already was risen in the morn, and had heard mass in Matins. Neath a pine tree did he fare. He called to him his barons to take his counsel there, for he desired unto the Franks the matter to declare. Beneath a mighty pine tree the emperor sat in state. He summoned there his barons to counsel and debate. There came Archbishop Turpin, there also Ogier came, old Richard and his nephew that Henry had to name, and Asselin, the noble count of the land of Gascony, and Thibault de Rain, and Milon, of Thibault's kin was he and Guerrier and Guerin, with them Count Roland stood, and Olivera, moreover the gallant and the good, of Franks of France, unto the place a thousand men did win. Ganelon came, the traitor that betrayed the king and friend, and there began the council, and had so ill an end. The king made clear his council, until the barons there, but Count Roland in the matter would have no lot nor share. Up he sprang and gain said it. Never believe again, King Marcel. Seven years are past since we came to Spain. Constantinople city and Comible, the town beside Valtierra and the land of Pine, have I conquered far and wide, Valvier, Seville, Tudela. I stormed them in my way. King Marcel will do nothing but deceive thee and betray. Then he sent fifteen panims. They also said the same. With branches of olive to the speak, their word to came, thou boutest the Franks to counsel. They charge thee, lighter now. 